Hey folks, uh, this is my second shot at a video. Uh, the first one I did, uh, the focus got all screwy and didn't look right. So, and I also didn't have a before picture. So this is my man cave slash home theater video. Uh, I spent the last six months on the project and I redid my basement here. You can see right now it looks wood paneling, uh, crappy floor, uh, old lights on the right hand side along the wall. So pretty much a useless space in my basement. So I decided to redo the entire thing. Uh, it took me about six months, all in materials, electronics, everything. I, I spent probably about five to $6,000. So um, with all the work that I did, it was uh, pretty cheap. And um, the square footage I had is 33 feet long by 11 feet. So I didn't have a ton of space. Wanted to incorporate a bar <clears throat> and a home theater area. So I was, uh, very limited, couldn't have a dedicated area. So I ended up kind of doing the best I could with the space and kind of went medium level with all the different components and things that I bought. So this was the before picture and uh, this is what it looks like now. So you could see uh, quite an extensive change and I'm gonna walk you through kind of what I did here to put this all together. So, you know, if anybody wants to do this, uh, they can certainly do it. Uh, I did the wall work, work myself, did not hire any contractors. I'm pretty good at electrical, uh, plumbing, that type of thing. Uh, I'm not a contractor by trade, but kind of learn things by doing smaller projects. But this is certainly within the wheelhouse of anybody that has any type of, you know, home improvement knowledge, nothing quite extensive that you need to bring a contractor in for. So let me start out by um, telling you about the floor. Put in a vinyl plank flooring. I uh, wanted to go with vinyl in a basement because the other floor options, which are laminate and rug, don't do well when there's water. And eventually your hot water tank's going to go, something's going to happen down here, a sewer backup or whatever, that you want to have a floor that's resilient to that. So we put a regular rug down, but um, the floor is vinyl plank. It's snapped together, no glue, um, no underlayment. Uh, so we got it at Lowe's. It's about $3 a square foot. Looks nice. Looks like wood. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is I had to level my floor, so I had to mix up a bunch of that concrete leveler and level the floor out in the left-hand side there. It was about an inch lower than the right-hand side, so I ended up doing that. That was a mess. Um, not a lot of fun. That was probably the worst part of this project, is mixing that up and having to dump that out and level it out and then get the angle grinder out for some of the high spots, so not a ton of fun. The walls, what I ended up doing was removing all the wood paneling, ripping down the button board and putting new drywall up, ran all new electrical on both sides. Um, I'll take you through what I did with the electrical, but I, start, I have about three or four circuits down here with all the electronics. I didn't want everything to get overloaded, so I ended up going with three or four circuits, planned it all out before I did it. Ran all new electrical, insulated this wall as an exterior wall, and then re-drywalled and painted, obviously also ran uh, door molding on the top because it you know uh, between the drywall and the ceilings it makes it look real clean and i like the way that it looks and it's certainly cheaper than using crown molding which is typically two to three dollars a square foot this was you know 59 cents a square foot ended up ceiling decided to paint the ceiling flat black i've seen it done in a couple basements and it looks real nice so what i ended up doing is i ran all the electrical all the can lights and then I had a friend come over and spray it black. Um, so it essentially costed me uh, four gallons of paint and uh, a case of beer. So I, I like the way that it turned out, kind of has an industrial feel, and I still have access to all the wiring. And my basement's kind of low in here. The ceiling's not that high. It's a little under uh, eight feet. So I didn't want to have drywall kind of closing everything in. So I, I think it turned out great. Uh, the artwork on the walls, I decided to plaque some Dave Matthews posters that I had from different concerts that my wife and I go to. I think they it's really neat artwork and uh, I like the plaque look versus the, the framing it and it's about the same as far as cost. You want to buy a good frame and put them up, they're about 50 bucks a piece and placking is about 50 bucks. So um, I don't have a, I still have a, some room uh, to put some additional uh, posters up but uh, for the most part I might fill it in with some movie posters. I think seating is important when you decide what you're going to do with your home theater. Um, I ended up going with uh, these couches. Uh, the reason why I went with couches is 
I don't like the home theater seats that are individual seats because you can't lay down on them. So, you know, every once in a while you want to lay down on something. So I ended up getting these, which you can lay down on, which are nice. Um, they're not real leather, uh, but they ended up costing me, I think for both of them, they were about, I want to say 1300 a piece. Um, so a little pricey, but both ends kind of recline. You can see this one's kind of half reclined and the buttons here and it's actually cool. It lights up. Uh, so you could put, you know, beer or a drink there. There's storage in the arm and then the middle folds down with cup holders. And then you can see there's two USB and two plugs. So, you know, my kids have a lot of electronics. They're always charging things and we'd have to run extension cords and everything around the couch. But these are pretty cool because you don't have to do that. So I, I like how these uh, actually look and, uh, you know, relatively inexpensive um, from a furniture standpoint. And then you get four reclining seats in the two middle seats. We were gonna go with a couch and a love seat, but the love seat was only $60 cheaper, so I ended up being able to fit two couches in here. So I, I like the way that those ended up looking. And then we put kind of an area rug down. So I'll kind of go through uh, the electronics here for a minute. Uh, I went kind of mid-range as far as speakers and components. Um, so the, the, the rear speakers are R-15Ms, they're Klepsch, uh, bookshelf speakers um, and then I bought the clips that you can hang them up there um, you can see I went all around Klepsch as far as speakers uh, the center channel is an R25C the fronts are R-28Fs um, and the sub is an R12SW uh, uh, 12 inch um, I may go with another subwoofer, but I do like the way that this sounds. Like when I get this sound going, it, it really booms down here uh, with the one subwoofer, but I may put another one down and those speakers are great. I think all in, I spent on all the speakers about $1,000. These speakers were actually, if you buy them at Best Buy, they're about $4.99 a piece. I, I got them on sale for Black Friday for half off. So I ended up um, not spending as much uh, as I needed, to, as I um, was expecting for these speakers, but I love Klepp speakers. They sound really great. Music, movies, um, really great. Uh, and then I ended up taking, uh, you know, running them through the walls, nice clean look, and the wall plates look nice. So uh, I love the look of the speakers. For uh, a screen, I went with uh, an Elite Screen 110 inch motorized screen. So that screen actually comes down and there's actually a TV behind there. So what ultimately I want to do is behind there is a 60 inch TV. Uh, so it looks really tiny compared to this 110 inch screen. And the image is a little washed out because I have uh, the lights on. So I'm going to turn the lights off in a second to give you a, a sense of what it looks like. But great picture. I uh, love the screen. And uh, eventually what I want to do is I want to put uh, along with the 60 inch behind it, two other TVs and an electronic fireplace. That's kind of version 2.0 but for now I have uh, you know the 110 inch screen that comes down out of the ceiling um, as far as a projector I went with the um, the Optima uh, GT 1080p 3d DLP uh, gaming projector uh, I can't say enough about it I, I probably spent six hundred fifty dollars on it and it's great I mean I I don't you know I don't I've never spent you know three grand on a projector but I couldn't see why you'd want to do that I mean it's 1080p quality and when I shut the lights off here um, I'll shut it off I mean you can see it. it it's crystal clear even with the lights on over there you, you get a great picture um, I wouldn't really understand why anybody would want to spend more than that I'll turn my lights back on here on a projector because you know 650 was enough for me and I ended up the only thing that I don't like about this projector is you got to really put it Where you want it uh, as far as in relationship to the screen because there's really no Focus in and out or movement in and out zoom. I guess you'd call it So it took me a while to get that up in the right spot And you can see it's tilted upwards a little bit because the image actually comes down. So it's upside down So it took me a little while to figure it out, but um I'm a big fan of the projector. I, I was worried about the lighting, but you can see it. It, it. it looks great. Even, you know, with all the lights off, it looks even better. My kids come down here and watch a ton of movies. So as far as uh, my components go, I built this rack myself. I ended up taking some MDF, cutting it on my table saw, and then painting it white. You can buy a jig on um, Amazon to make those little holes in your MDF so you could 
um, drill those yourselves. I, that's what I did, and I ended up painting it. So it's a lot cheaper than going to Home Depot and buying the, you know, the closet components to make a, a shelf like that. If you get a piece of MDF and you have a table saw, and you have some know-how, you can make a, a shelf like this. So those shelves are adjustable. They go up and down. I have little clips that go in there. Um, so as f far as components go, uh, my receiver is an Onkyo TX NR737 7.2 Dolby Atmos receiver. I love this receiver. It's 110 watts per channel, kind of mid-range. It was about $500 for that receiver. You could spend up to three or four grand on a receiver, but I don't know why you would because this has everything I need. Bluetooth, uh, it has seven HDMI uh, inputs on the back. So I'm running everything from Google, uh, Chromecast, Apple um, TV, um, cable box obviously is right there. Uh, I have Xbox 360, Xbox One. Everything's running through that receiver. It's got Bluetooth. I play a ton of music on it. I have uh, my Plex, which is my home theater PC going through my Xbox One. I'll show you that in a second. That's pretty cool. And then I have my universal remote. So everything's kind of in there. Um, I have a ton of remotes, but I ended up getting a Harmony Elite remote. That's a nice little toy. Uh, it kind of incorporates everything and you can run everything from one remote. So the, the receiver itself, I, I don't have any issues with it. Uh, it has two zones, so I'm able to power another zone within the house. Um, and then I have it hooked up to my uh, Wi-Fi. I have my own Wi-Fi signal down here because since everything's Wi-Fi these days, I ran a line from my modem upstairs, uh, my Verizon modem to down here, so I had my own separate signal. The other thing I want to mention while I'm over here is the uh, lights. I have the Lutron uh, switches right there. I ended up, I want to do those for all the, the four circuits that I have down here for lights because I'm going to eventually hook them up to my Amazon Echo so I'll voice control everything and I'll do a video on how I'm going to do that but that's pretty cool you can control the lights by your voice I just don't have that yet so those are actually on a remote and that's the remote right there for the lights um, the issue with those switches is they're $50 a piece so um, the other way you can go is the Philips makes a hue lighting that actually goes and connects to your Wi-Fi but I like the switches better because it controls everything and you don't have to replace the expensive bulbs I ended up going with all LED lights down here uh, because my kids love to uh, leave the lights on. So I wanted to make sure that uh, I had lights that weren't gonna burn a ton of energy. So that's kind of my home theater components. Um, as we move along here, um, this is my bar area. I built this bar myself. The bar is made up of plywood, uh, stain grade plywood um, that has kind of an oak veneer on it. And I framed it out with two by fours, and uh, then I, I covered it with the actual um, plywood, and then the I have some molding pieces that are solid red oak. So I think all in, I probably spent I want to say three or four hundred dollars on the wood for the bar, you know, and the stain, and then what I used was spar varnish, which is um, polyurethane that they use on boats, and I gave five coats to the top of it, and. Uh, uh, a couple coats on the bottom but uh, I think it, it, it turned out great and those stools I ended up buying from Amazon for uh, they were a hundred bucks so they're cheap but they kind of go uh, well with the bar what I ended up doing with the bar the only real expensive piece of that is that top piece this it's called bar rail and uh, that's that top piece right there I bought that at a store called keg works uh, and uh, had to stain that and that's a piece that uh, they custom make and then I cut and mitered the side, uh, the corner there. Um, the bar is about eight feet long and I wanted to have a few feet on the on the um, side there to, to be able to walk by. So you can see I ended up going with a tap. I bought that at Keg Works, a conversion kit. Uh, I bought essentially a hundred dollar fridge at um, uh, Home Depot. Uh, the fridge is like a 4.4 cubic foot uh, fridge underneath there. It's right underneath there. I'll show you that but that's where that tap comes through So I ended up cutting a hole in the top of that fridge and then running an insulated line up to the tap So I have beer on tap here um, The thing about running a line through a fridge like that is you got to be careful not to hit the refrigeration lines because you will destroy the fridge and that's actually my second fridge because when I was drilling the hole for my the first one I Missed one and then hit another one, so I ended up uh, ruining the fridge, so I had to spend another $100 on a fridge, but it worked out. I love the, the, the concept of having tap beer down here, and I'll show you that in a second. So I'm going to 
kind of the other thing I wanted to point out before I get over here is the lights. I ended up going with kind of an industrial feel light with those old bulbs. I think they look cool down here. Uh, I got those on Amazon and uh, versus kind of your standard light bulbs. Uh, those look kind of neat. Uh, so I'm going to turn the main light on so you can see um, some stuff back here. Uh, that fridge right there, I ended up going with a 9.9 .9 cubic foot fridge from um, Home Depot. And the reason why I went with a fridge like that versus a beverage center is I wanted a freezer and those beverage centers get horrible reviews. They freeze up, they have issues, and that fridge, I, I measured it, I needed 24 inches and that fit my bill perfectly. Um, and it's got a freezer because if you're going to have a bar in your basement, you want to have ice. So I would recommend getting something with a freezer in it. Um, that way you can have ice down here because a lot of drinks require ice and um, I'll give you a look inside um, you got a ton of room in a 9.9 .9 cubic foot fridge so you got pop beer you know pretty much my kids drink a ton of water they end up you know drinking five sips and, and leaving the water bottles out but that's essentially what it looks like inside so a ton of space plenty of room for beer water anything that you want so um, the next thing over is my popcorn machine um, that's a, a, a Lincoln uh, popcorn machine, uh, eight ounce. That thing is the best. We end up using these packets down here. I have everything down here um, that have everything in them. They have the, uh, the butter and the flavor and this stuff tastes exactly like the theater. It is really great. And you know, eight ounces pop enough for a family of four. I ended up buying, um, turn the light on in this, it's kind of cool. So that's what it kind of looks like and that light keeps everything warm. Um, I ended up buying these bags right here. Um, a lot of people have the buckets and I don't understand that because no one really eats a bucket of popcorn and these you could do individual serving size. So I fill one of these up for my kids each and my wife and I have one and that pretty much um, satisfies your appetite from a popcorn perspective. And these bags were five, I got 500 of them for, I don't know, 10 bucks. So they're, they're really cheap. Um, I ended up getting a bunch of candy, obviously to have a movie, you want to have candy. So we have a Walgreens near our house. I ended up buying a bunch of dollar candy. Um, they're nice. The kids, uh, like to eat that, um, every once in a while. So the next thing over, I bought that Guinness mirror actually on, um, uh, eBay. Um, it was a hundred bucks, but it looks nice up there against the brick. And you remember the beginning photo, the, the brick was up there already. So I just kind of hung everything on the brick and you could see behind the popcorn machine there, uh, I have an outlet with four plugs and I have the same thing on that side. So when I ran the electrical, I knew I was going to have a lot of components. So the, the advice I would give is plan ahead and run more electrical than you're going to need. That way uh, you have plenty of things that you can uh, plug in. So that the bottle, shelf right there. I actually made that myself. Uh, took You can see the wood from the bar, uh, essentially put it together with some brad nails, drilled a hole in the side, uh, took some plexiglass, cut it on my table saw, sprayed it with this um, it, uh, spray paint that essentially clouds it, and then I bought some LED lights from Amazon for 20 bucks and put them inside. And there's a remote right there. You can see it and it changes the colors of the lights. So, you know, when the lights are off, it looks kind of neat and it could flash. So that's that looks like something you'd actually see in a bar. And I built that myself. It probably cost me $30 in materials. If I wanted to buy something like that, it was probably 150 bucks. So if anybody has any questions on how to make something like that, I could, you know, walk you through it. Uh, I might do a separate video on that because it was uh, pretty neat. Um, and then I ended up going with, uh, that's actually a, a wine glass holder that I got from Home Depot that goes with a larger set, but it actually worked out where it looks nice down here. So I think I spent like 20 bucks on that. So it's, uh, it looks, you know, like you'd see in a real bar with the glasses hanging. I think it's got a cool look and I can always, you know, buy another one. That's a 43 inch Vizio smart TV. Uh, nothing special there. I, I wanted to have another TV down here. I actually end up watching a lot of shows on that TV because my kids are watching on the large screen. So I ended up watching here, but separate cable box. So I have two cable boxes down here so I could watch two separate feeds, which are nice. And then that back shelving unit, I built that same as the bar, framed it out with two by fours, did the uh, pine laminate uh, stained gray plywood. And then the moldings are all done with a solid uh, red oak. That was kind of the most expensive thing is that solid red oak. The shelves are the same thing. It's three quarter inch ply. Did laminate strips on the edge to make it look clean 
And um, same thing with the shelves for my components. Had that Amazon jig and I, I made those holes so you could just put the clips and those shelves are adjustable. It's amazing, everyone starts buying you stuff for your bar, so a lot of those glasses people are buying for me as they, you know, I have a bar here, so those are all kind of pine glasses that I use. Um, you can see the copper cups over there for the Moscow mules. My wife likes to drink those, so we have those down there. So overall, very happy with the way the bar turned out. So the tap itself, um, I bought that from Kegworks, and you can get a conversion kit for a, a fridge, and it, it costs you about $200. You have to buy a CO2 tank, which is another $50 bucks plus $15 to fill it. Um, and then uh, the drip tray I actually bought from Kegworks as well, and what I ended up doing with the drip tray, instead of having to pick it up and empty it into my sink over there, I actually... Um, Got one with a drain in it. You can see down below there's a tube that I ran. It took, you know, three quarter inch tube, ran it underneath to my sink, which I installed. And you can see beneath there, it's a, a hookup for a washing machine, uh, a dishwasher, I'm sorry. And the plumbing, I just hooked it up and that's my inline vent for the uh, sink because you have to vent your sink. So I ended up putting a sink down here. Uh, so I was able to run this drip tray into the sink, which worked out perfectly. So this is the fridge. Like I said, it's a $100 fridge from Home Depot. I'm going to open it here. So that's my keg. It's a sixth of a keg. It fits in there perfectly with my CO2 tank. And then I have a thermometer in there that I keep this at about 36 degrees because that's the perfect temperature for serving beer. So I have a spare CO2 tank just in case I run out. And that's what the CO2 tank looks like right there. So this is the back of the bar. You can see that it's not quite finished yet, but I ran GFI outlets. Uh, because you got to have GFI to code and then the the sink right there is a standard bar sink um, And I ran you can see the plumbing here I ran uh, Pex for the supply lines and standard PVC for the drain lines and the, the great thing about this and I'll show you in a second is I, there, Behind this wall. There's a bathroom. So that sink here the toilet in the bathroom and uh, the sink in the bathroom go into a Santa flow pump because my waistline is about a foot above my basement floor so I had to pump it out up and out into um, to get it into the drain so the, the countertop here is just a laminate I, I glued on nothing fancy I didn't really want to do anything crazy back here because nobody even sees this so um, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out obviously the laminate or the, the vinyl floor runs throughout and uh, I'll give you a view of the opposite direction here. I, I still have a few things to do. I didn't do the stairs yet. I gotta do the stairs. I'm gonna do those with hardwood and, and poly them and stain them and they're gonna look real nice and put a railing up. I just haven't had a chance to do that yet because there's a lot going on down here. So let me show you the, oh, the other thing I want to show you here is those, uh, I got those uh, tin signs about 10 years ago for my birthday and just held on to them and I threw them up on the wall. They look, you know, cool. It looks like signs you'd have in, 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 a, in, a, in a bar so here is the bathroom uh, the vinyl floor goes into the bathroom same thing here I spray painted the top and did some industrial look lights you can see the molding there I haven't quite finished that yet um, put a mirror up so that sink um, and that toilet and the, and the sink in the bar all go into that pump this toilet is actually you can't see it but it's a rear discharge toilet it actually goes out of the back of the toilet into the pump and the pump is very quiet it's a Santa flow uh, pump and I'll show you the pump in a minute but I wanted to have a bathroom down here and um, this is a perfect solution if you don't want to rip up your basement floor uh, to have a pump that this stuff goes into you just got to be careful because you can't the only thing that can go into this toilet is uh, number one number two and toilet paper you can't throw anything else in the toilet um, but for the most part this is a fully functioning bathroom so I was able to add this this was actually part of our laundry room so I took part of the laundry room and I'll show you the other side of this to put this bathroom in but I think it's a must to have a, a bathroom in a basement um, especially if you're gonna have a have a bar down here so the other thing I want to show you is the behind the scenes here. I think it's pretty interesting to show you. I'll, I'll show you the pump and then what I did with uh, my, uh, I created a home theater PC. So this is the, uh, this is the, uh, I took an old PC that I had from um, upstairs and I ended up putting this application called Plex on it. 
So Plex is an application that you use for a home theater PC. So I saw a lot of videos where people were taking, um, uh, you know, DVDs and had setting up walls and walls of DVDs. And I, I didn't like the way that looks, so I ended up doing uh, this and putting everything on my PC. So I have a four terabyte hard drive right there, and uh, the um, everything's on my PC. So that streams through my Xbox One. So any video that I want, I, I get, and then I just uh, stream it through my Xbox One, which is nice. So I built this shelf back here. Sorry about that background noise. I think my wife's running uh, bath water. But uh, this is all the electronics. I don't have a power conditioner. I don't really have problems with power, but I ended up doing some surge protectors. I have three of them right there. I ended up installing an outlet there, an outlet there. So plenty of room. And then this gives me access to all my components. I think eventually I'm gonna put um, some type of cover back there just to make sure that uh, you, know, you can't see through here when you're watching a movie or something. But, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do with that yet, I'm not sure. I like having access to everything. So this is the back of the receiver. You can see it's got uh, two different channels and it's I got banana plugs going into the back of it and my Google Chromecast. And here's my wireless router. I'm a big fan of having a separate signal down here. So that's what I ended up doing. And then you can see I have access to all the wires. The other thing I wanna show you here is, uh, and it's kind of messy down here, is the plumbing associated with that pump. So that's the waistline, you get meant it's a one inch waistline, but that toilet and the sink in the bathroom and the sink for my bar go into this pump back here. So that's the pump and you know, leave me a message, I'll, I'll, I'll show you how to put something like that in. Uh, it's pretty straightforward if you have some basic plumbing knowledge. So the water, the waste goes into there, it pumps up through this one inch line comes over and then down into my main three inch waistline for my house. This is some plumbing that I did for a bathroom that I redid upstairs, but it essentially goes into there. So I'm able to have a bathroom in my basement. So overall, that's kind of what I did down here. I still have a few things to do. I'm gonna, you know, upgrade the, um, to the, uh, uh, the Amazon Echo to control everything down here. But for the most part, uh, I'm pretty happy with this. So again, it took me about six months. Um, and uh, overall, uh, we use this room a lot, especially to watch movies. We pretty much have a movie night every, every night. Let me show you real quick what the screen looks like when I shut all the lights off, just so you can see what the, uh, you know, the 1080p looks like uh, with all the lights off. Uh, because I think it looks really neat. Let me shut all these off. So you could see here, it's a, uh, it's a great, you know, you're talking 1080p clear. And if I kick the sound up here, I mean, you can't tell the difference between that TV back there and this screen. So this is a, a great looking screen, 1080p, or the screen was 250 and then the projector was 650, so looks great. Um, so if anybody has any questions, feel free to message me. All right, thanks.